afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Tuesday, March 25th. I'm Beth Ann Coldiron, and this is Texan Ag TV. Today's top stories, drought in the Rio Grande, agricultural commissioner recognizes ranching families, interview with Sid Miller, your weekly commodities report, and your local weather. From agweb.com, Tensions were high last Thursday as top water managers from New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas met to discuss water management of the Rio Grande Valley as the area is facing a severe drought and a legal battle that has left farmers and ranchers without a greatly needed water source. Federal experts say that the Rio Grande River has been stretched beyond its limits and Native American communities, as well as an endangered species of fish, are at risk. The Texas state government took a case to the U.S. Supreme Court more than a year ago, asking New Mexico to stop pumping groundwater along the border so that the Rio Grande River could flow further south to farmers and ranchers who need the water for their crops and livestock. Stuart Stomach, who is an attorney representing the state, said that Texas is just trying to defend itself and its citizens, and that there is no simple solution to this big problem. From the Texas Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Commissioner Todd Staples is recognizing farming and ranching families during the National Agriculture Week running from March 23rd through the 29th. National Agriculture Day is March 25th. The theme for this year is Agriculture, 365 sunrises and 7 billion mouths to feed. Agriculture is important to Texans 52 weeks a year, Commissioner Staples said. Next week, during National Agriculture Week, I ask all Texans to take the time to honor our dedicated farmers and ranchers. It's critical to remember, food doesn't grow on grocery store shelves. It takes hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance to feed Texans, Americans, and the world. More than $100 billion is contributed to the Texas economy annually from agriculture. It also supports more than 1.8 million jobs with everything from commodity training to journalism and advertising. More than just food and clothing, agriculture contributes to our homes, health, lifestyle, and the prosperity of this country, Commissioner Staples said. Today's farmers and ranchers are more productive and efficient than ever before, and as our population grows, there will be an even greater demand for food and fiber. Without our incredible farmers and ranchers, Texas wouldn't be the powerhouse of agricultural productivity that it is today. Last week, I had the chance to sit down with Sid Miller, a resident of Stephenville who is running for agricultural commissioner. We discussed his campaign and platform as well as some of the press he has received. We are here today with Sid Miller. He is running for agricultural commissioner for Texas. Thank you so much for coming in today. Oh, thanks. Glad to be here. <laughs> And we are going to talk a little bit about his campaign, his platform, what he plans to do if elected. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, how you've been involved in agriculture. I know you've been heavily involved in agribusiness for a long time. You own a nursery, a landscaping company. You've also taught agriculture on a vocational level. And you raise champion roping quarter horses. Um, how can your experiences in agriculture help you win this election? Well, I'm an eighth generation farmer and rancher. Uh, my family moved to uh, this country in the 1700s. We fought in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World Wars I and World War II. And we've been farming and ranching the last four generations here in Texas. Mm -hmm. Of course, I live here in, in uh, Stephenville. Uh, I have cattle and uh, raise different crops. Have uh, American Quarter Horses and uh, have a tree farm, a nursery farm right, right here in Stephenville. So you have to do a lot of things to make a living in, in ag culture yeah. in, in Stephenville. I'm a graduate, a honors graduate, Tarleton State University with a degree in agriculture. The only, only person in this race that actually has a degree in, in agriculture. And I was a vocational ag teacher, FFA advisor, and 4-H leader mm -hmm. uh, when I got out of college and then uh, uh, still farming and ranching and, and I've been doing that full time. I left the teaching pr profession after, after five years, but my wife has stayed in it. She is the founder of two at-risk charter schools where she's reaching out and giving kids a, a second chance and uh, uh, very, very successful at, at that. 
So I do have a, a wide range of experience uh, in the ag sector, but I also have I had a legislative career. I spent six terms in the Texas House of Representatives, uh, representing District 59, which included Erath County and Tarleton State University. You know, while I was state representative, we uh, secured funding for the new nursing building, the cafeteria upgrades here on campus, the new dairy out, out, out at, on, on 281. Uh, but I was chairman of the Agriculture and Livestock Committee, which is important because that's the committee that actually has oversight over the Texas Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. over the Ag Commissioner, its budget, you know, and all, all of its programs. So I do have some working knowledge of that. Some people say I hit the ground running, but uh, uh, I'm kind of like uh, Dominic Natavio when he first came <laughs> to Tarleton. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the ground listening. Yeah. Uh, now, one issue you touch on in your platform is water conservation. Uh, this is a very important topic for Texans because we have been experiencing so much drought the past couple of years. Um, if elected Ag Commissioner, what kind of water conservation programs do you plan to implement? Well, I'm going to do something that no Ag Commissioner has ever done and I'll make water my number one priority. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas for many, many years was sparsely populated and we could water ourselves with windmills, but those days are gone. We now mm -hmm. have 26 million people in this state and we have a limited amount of water. So we have to start using what water we have uh, wisely and more efficiently. Uh, we've had, uh, in the last two elections, the voters have approved $8 billion of taxpayer dollars uh, to uh, help with water projects around the state. Uh, the problem is that's overseen by the Texas Water Development Board, which is now a three-member board and uh, none of those people represent rural Texas mm -hmm. or agriculture. So someone needs to hold them responsible and be looking over their shoulder and uh, be looking out for small rural communities and our, our agriculture enterprises, our, our farmers and ranchers, because uh, right now we, we don't have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things we can do is, is conserve water, being a conservative. I think that's the first place you should look. Some of our largest cities, matter of fact, uh, from the time they receive the wa their water until they deliver it to their customers are losing 30 percent and that's just an infrastructure problem that can be fixed re relatively cheap when you compare it to building reservoirs mm -hmm. and uh, uh, transportation of water uh, and it can be done relatively fast another area that we're, we're looking at is, is desalinization uh, we've got the cost down on that now where it's uh, more cost uh, you know, efficient. <coughs> Excuse me. We're doing that on, on the coast in some areas. The city of El Paso has been doing it for quite some time. And it looks like we can take some of our brackish water in, in West Texas and, and clean that up. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a number of things we can do. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> now, me. another issue on your platform is immigration reform, which has been a very hot uh, button issue. Now, as far as immigration reform and border security, how can you stop illegal immigration from an agriculture standpoint? Well, uh, this is something I, I do have some experience in because uh, I also chaired the House Committee on uh, uh, Border Security and uh, Public Safety, which we had oversight over the Texas Rangers, the, the Department of Public Safety, and, and securing the Texas border. So I have those relationships already there with the Texas Rangers, the border sheriffs, and we made great headways there. Uh, the way you secure the border is, is uh, take away the incentive to come in here illegally. And you can do that with a guest worker program. But before you can do that, you have to secure the border. Mm -hmm. And a, a, We have a, a guest worker program now, but it's not very successful and it's not working very well. So my idea of a, of a, a good guest worker program is the uh, people that want to come up here and work on our farms and ranches and in our, our factories or construction or service industry, they would have to pay a fee. Uh, the taxpayers mm -hmm. should not be responsible for that, mm -hmm. should not subsidize it. Mm -hmm. Right now they, they pay a fee, they, but they pay it to a coyote to smuggle them in, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, human trafficking, which is uh, illegal immigration. So they would sign up, get approved. They could come up here and work for a specific amount of time, 10 months, something like that. Uh, then they would have to go home. And the way you assure that they go home is uh, you would take a, like a 10% surcharge uh, out of their check. 
mm-hmm. and they when they fulfilled their contract in return, uh, they would get the balance of that uh, that pay. So, and I think that would that would work real well, and and everybody wins on that because now they're they're getting paid above the table. They're they're not a burden on our, our on our uh, social system, mm-hmm. our services. Uh, they are paying into the system. They're paying taxes, mm-hmm. and they're on a level playing field with the rest of the labor force uh, mm-hmm. in, throughout the United States. So, to me, that's what a, a workable uh, guest worker program would look like. Okay, and say you you meet an a, an illegal immigrant who came to Texas just because they wanted to have a better life for their family. Um, and they just have not had any success in becoming a legal citizen. Do you have a problem with uh, illegal immigrants wanting to stay and becoming actual citizens if they go through the actual process of getting their green well, card? Well, let me just make this real plain. No amnesty for anyone that's been breaking the law. Mm-hmm. They have to go through the proper channels, just like the people that have gained their citizenship. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a pretty plain uh, position for me. Okay. Um, now, on December 5th of 2013, Dallas Morning News ran a story in which you received a complaint from the American Quarter Horse Association citing animal abuse for tying three of your horses to your trailer and exercising them by driving around at a parking lot uh, at a show in San Antonio. Can you give us your side to this story? Sure. You know, uh, you, have to, you have to understand that I've won uh, nine world championships mm-hmm. and some people are, are jealous. and would like to see you out of the show ring. So there, there was an uh, erroneous complaint filed. Uh, the uh, AQHA investigated. There was no fines, no suspension, uh, no action taken. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week there was a, a, an article about my Ag Commissioner race in the uh, uh, Abilene Reported News and they interviewed the uh, manager of the show down there and he said, you know, absolutely at no time were any of the horses in danger and they never were. So. Uh, absolutely nothing to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am a, uh, you know, make my living off those horses. Uh, I love my horses. I'm a honorary vice president of, of the American Quarter Horse Association. So, yeah, nothing to it. And uh, I think one of my opponents, you know, dug that up and tried to make something out of, out of nothing. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they have a tendency to do that when they can't beat you on the issues, they can't beat you on the endorsements, and they can't beat you on the experience. The only thing that's left for them to do is drag you through the mud. Right. So. I mean, why why exercise your horses this way? Why not just attach them to a lunge line and lunge them? Well, it's it's actually pr- pretty common practice. I mean, uh, uh, most horse farms, uh, you know, have some mechanical means to, to lead Ball and exercise horses, yeah. their horses, whether it be hot walkers or, or uh, a lot of people lead them with, with tractors, you know, or uh, tied to their pickup. I mean, it's, it's common practice. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Ted Nugent is listed on your website as your treasurer, mm-hmm. and he has appeared in some of your campaign videos. Right. Um, in a recent interview with Guns.com, he called President Obama a subhuman mongrel. Do you agree with his statement, and have you felt the need to distance yourself from him? Well, let me say this. I, I am not going to distance myself from Ted Nugent. Uh, you know, he's, he's my American blood brother. He is a great American. And what you didn't read in the rest of that story is he walked those... Uh, words back. Mm-hmm. He apologized for that, mm-hmm. and uh, so I, I'm good with that. Uh, you know, I, I would say to your listeners, you know, don't judge uh, a man on one sentence that he uttered. Look at his whole life. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has uh, uh, founded a cap for kids, for underprivileged kids, for kids with d- disease diseases and and uh, uh, handicapped kids that he does uh, throughout the year. Uh, he has created a Hunters for the Hungry, where he's provided tens of thousands of pounds of, of fresh organic meat to soup kitchens and homeless homeless shelters. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has done numerous hours and hours of volunteer work and donated his own money to the Wounded Warriors projects. Uh, he has done uh, hours and hours of, of uh, volunteer work for the to protect the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. Serves as board member of the National Rifle Association. Uh, he's been married to his wife for 25 years, has a beautiful family. So, yeah, I look at the whole man. I don't condemn a person for one statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kinky Freeman is one of the Democrats running for agricultural commissioner, and he is taking a pro-pot stance and essentially wants to turn Texas into Colorado by collecting tax revenue 
um, from the legalization and decriminalization of marijuana. What are your views on decriminalizing and legalizing marijuana? Well, I can appreciate Kinky wanting to promote Texas agriculture and bring new products in, but uh, that's absolutely the wrong, wrong way to do it. Uh, for one thing, it's illegal. To, to grow hemp or marijuana in the state. So, uh, number two, there's no infrastructure for that. There's no processing plants for hemp in, in the state of Texas. Uh, it's not something that we can actually change on our own and take federal legislation. And as an ag commissioner, you don't make law. You you go you you uh, you know you're the executive director of an agency. Mm -hmm. The legislature does that, so it has absolutely no power to do that. What I would like to do, though, is is promote jobs in, in, in our rural economy. You know, uh, everybody loves to eat catfish in this state, but we don't grow hardly any catfish here. Mm -hmm. uh, we import about 80 to 90 percent of our horticultural products from California, Florida, and Louisiana. There's a whole big market for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas is, is uh, one of the best places in the United States for, for grapes and vineyards, and we can expand on our wine and grape industry in this state. Uh, Tropical fish, one out of 10 homes has an aquarium in it. No one in Texas that I can find is growing tropical fish. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, it's an endless number of things it, uh, that we can do to improve our agriculture success and expand our agriculture economy in Texas without uh, growing dope. Mm -hmm. And to wrap up our interview, why should Texans vote for you? You know, what they get from me is the real deal. Uh, I want to keep Texas, Texas. And uh, as I look at our country, I see it coming more and more like the socialist countries of Europe. As I travel this state, I see our rural Texas uh, changing and looking more and more like California. Uh, I'm here and I'm running because I want to keep uh, our, our family values. I want to keep Texas strong. I don't want Texas to change and look like California. Texas is the last great place. Uh, we can turn this country around. Uh, but Texas is going to have to lead the way. Mm -hmm. uh, if we lose Texas, there is no other place to move to. Texas is the last great place. And that's why I'm running. I want to keep Texas, Texas. Okay, well I want to thank you once again for coming in. You can read all of Sid Miller's issues and platforms at his website, which is www.millerfortexas.com. Thank you for coming in. Here is your weekly commodities report brought to you by GrainTV.com. Commodities took a slide this week. Corn is up a half a cent. Soybeans are down by 25%. Wheat is down by 10.5%. Kansas City wheat is down by 10.25%. Crude oil is down 0.94%. Feeder cattle are up 0.1%. Live cattle are down 0.3% and lean hogs are down 0.575%. Your five-day local weather is brought to you by weather.com. Today, our high will cap at 69 degrees with a low tonight of 39. Tuesday will be a high of 64 and a low of 43. Wednesday will be a high of 59 and a low of 52 with a 100% chance for rain. Thursday will be a high of 83 and a low of 77 with a 30% chance of rain. Friday will be a high of 77 with a low of 42. That's all for today's show. Thank you for watching. Visit texannews.net for all your latest news and don't forget to like our Facebook page. Today's show was produced by Katie Gibbs and Bethany Kyle. From the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, I'm Beth Ann Coldiron. Have a great week, Cross Timbers.